Hello, everybody. Thanks so much for joining. Uh, this is uh, Archana from Intuit Circles. Um, you all are on mute, so if you have any questions, please do uh, drop us a note um, in the question panel. You could ask a question to the organizer. Uh, we also have Vidya who's joined us um, and who's on the call. Um, so I'm not going to take too much time and I'm going to uh, change the presenter uh, to Vidya. Uh, thanks so much again for joining everyone. So um, let's get started with this session. Uh, over to you Vidya, I've given you the control. Can you hear me Archana? Absolutely. And I have to share my <clears throat> screen. Ma Good afternoon, everyone. This is Vidya here. Mm, happy to spend time with you guys. And I'll tell you what I know of product roadmaps today. Hopefully, it should be useful. Mm, I'm just figuring out how to share the screen. <clears throat> Can you see my You're screen? Able to see your screen, Vidya. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Let's see. Okay, cool. So I'll just get rid of this <clears throat> dialogue here. Okay, so um, Arjuna, do we know how many uh, people have logged in? Um, yes, I think we can get started with you and I think people will trickle in. So I think that should be okay. Let's get started. Okay, so uh, I uh, got, uh, you know, I want, wanted to make this product roadmaps uh, slide. So, you know, two things at the beginning itself. Um, I worked long back at Intuit. So that's how, you know, I, I have this fond memories of Intuit. So I wanted to do this webinar for them. Um, after all my corporate life, I've uh, jumped full time into being a VC to a CTO and a co-founder now. So I uh, have experienced uh, quite quite a lot in the last uh, five, six years in startups. Um, so, uh, and uh, out of 14 startups that I've mentored, three of them have got funding. So hopefully, you know, that's a good ratio. Uh, and hopefully that will bring some credibility to what I'm talking about today. Um, Earlier, you know, many years before back, I used to look at Steve Blank and Eric Kreese and all those um, books. And, you know, I used to give um, lectures and talks on those. Now I have changed. So what I have, uh, what I am presenting to you all is straight away from my own experience. Um, what has worked for me? So, uh, and what's worked uh, for the Indian um, scenario and for, you know, Bangalore startups typically. Mm, so this is not, um, like uh, you know the only way that some someone will succeed so look at it as something where um, i'm bringing in my experiences and uh, whenever someone has a question uh, i think there is a chat um, uh, dialogue here feel free to ask me the questions on that and if there are not too many people feel free to ask a question using your audio so uh, disclaimers first uh, all the roadmaps that i've taken you know uh, are I did not uh, use anything that is confidential. Uh, the best roadmaps are, uh, I used to refer to um, were all from CEB, as you can see here, Customer Executive Board. Now I think Gartner has acquired them and I checked recently. So uh, that is the source of all my um, roadmaps. Um, all of them, I also checked that uh, you, you can also find using a Google image search. So I guess all of them are popular. Okay, so we, what are we going to cover today? We are only going to cover product roadmaps for startups. Uh, I'm not getting into uh, product roadmaps for enterprises. Uh, <clears throat> pretty different beast that is. Um, second thing is I'll also talk to you about what, what are the hygiene elements, non-negotiable ones uh, in a product roadmap. Uh, what are the usual checks and balances that a product manager, a dev manager, a release manager, the founders, the VC, the budget, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, provisions, all of them, what do they check with each other? Um, I'll be talking about that. Uh, a few examples and 
um, FAQ. So Archana is there. I'll ask her when to stop, and then you can ask, start asking questions. <clears throat> I uh, asked Archana who are uh, the what kind of companies are there in this. I got only four examples. I really wanted to make it uh, personal and you know as um, tailored to your company, but I I got four of them. Uh, one was a food tech uh, startup, uh, Bon Cuisine. Bon Cuisine, I think, is the name. Business Insights um, uh, stuff. One more, um, and then uh, there was uh, the real estate and construction startup, um, and then I think Prybox, the SME procure to pay startup. So. Uh, if I can, I'll give um, examples based on this. Yeah, if there are other companies who want me to check out for them, just contact me offline if you can. So let's talk about a product roadmap, right? All of us think product roadmap is uh, um, a long uh, progress bar with arrows and arrows going to the right from the left. And it will say, you know, what I'm going to do first and next and next and next. And, you know, everything will work like magic. Uh, obviously, that's not the case. So I'm going to a little bit uh, start off a little before pre product roadmap uh, because a product roadmap is always um, <clears throat> meant for developing products but those products are meant to test the hypothesis for the startup and if the hypothesis is working then the product deserves to be developed right that's that's a funda uh, <clears throat> which is uh, not always true for um, non startups but for startups surely that is the case so this is my favorite slide from um, Steve Blank slides. Uh, you know, I'm sure all of you have already done this. You know this, but effectively, you know, uh, anything that you want to test has to be part of this equation, which is if we do this, some a percentage of this, a number of this, or whatever, a numeric of this, uh, customers will behave in a certain behavior. So let's take um, examples, right? So we have our um, food tech startup. Right? So for food, food tech startup, let's say you you, you want to put uh, your virtual cafeteria in your uh, product roadmap. Um, before that, certain hypothesis of yours should actually sat satisfy this criteria. For example, if you say, um, if we do uh, virtual streaming of videos, uh, at least 20% of our customers will have to um, start using that uh, regularly uh, once in a week basis that's when i know that for virtual cafeteria uh, my streaming feature is working okay or similarly uh, let's say um, you know uh, for um, real estate the virtual real estate system um, you may want to check yeah you know um, if if i'm able to um, get all the the construction marketplace you know those kind of audiences is certain if if the cust if we if we uh, get the customer uh, from the building real estate marketplace of say gulbarga uh, you know then 5% of our target customers in north karnataka will you know procure uh, jaguar tab taps only from there i know i'm, I'm trying to give uh, examples suited to you but i hope you get the idea now this hypothesis they, they, you know it's called customer metrics success metrics various names are given but for whatever feature that someone is putting into the roadmap they have to say not only why and what they have to fit into this equation if any uh, you know i'll complete like, like 50 percent and then if you have questions on this you can come back to this so uh, what is important the right side bullets what stage the startup is at is very important if you are in seed or you know series a or b or c d e onwards it slightly changes but until then we are all early stage companies um, and at mvp stage or even otherwise for a startup this roadmap has to start off with lean experimentation I will talk about this uh, uh, later. A lot of us, a lot of us think we are lean, but we are pretty heavy weight and we spend a lot of money uh, on uh, building search and features which won't get used. So uh, it's very important to um, bring in the right checks and balances in the beginning itself. Not to be too austere, that is only for textbooks. We can't be too austere, but uh, a decent uh, balance. 
and uh, product roadmap is not cast in stone uh, it changes continuously so that is not a crime so uh, i have seen uh, vcs come up to founders and say hey you know how come your roadmap was something else uh, six months back and you guys have completely changed what's happening you know are you guys focused what's happening that means you know uh, as investors or founders you have to be happy that the roadmap has changed because the roadmap is continuously adjusting itself to the product market fit or to the strategy of the company <clears throat> okay so let's talk about hygiene elements right the non-negotiables ones so what did i mean by lean experiments so lean experiments are <clears throat> it's a it's a it's a uh, a favorite topic of mine uh, when you build products um, you know prototyping for example is a tool that is highly underrated uh, a lot of us build products uh, for the market without knowing the market uh, but you know um, if if we can build prototypes that look like almost real stuff uh, there are a lot of prototyping tools and sometimes you can even build a uh, you know a lightweight product like a prototype a mock tool but if you can do that um, a lot of uh, things you don't have to put into the product roadmap uh, what I mean by that is, you know, so let's say I'm taking some of the example. I'll take uh, Prybox, uh, which is um, uh, procuring to payments. Um, so, so let's say you want to you want to build um, for SMEs. You want to build a product where um, from purchase to uh, the whole workflow is being taken care of. Now, um, you may want to know, um, hey, is you know. SMEs are basically, you know, let's assume it's tier two, tier three, tier four cities. So these are essentially literate, smart guys, but not really savvy, you know, not like a, a valley you know, or like Bangalorean. You may want to check out um, how do they really want to do payments till the end? What are uh, outside limits? What are the things that I don't know? What are the things that actually have happen only in cash what are the things that happen through adjustments you know you know it goes to another guy's books but someone else pays cash through some other way back nothing unethical that is their way of doing things uh, for example when i um, went and bought uh, vegetables uh, in one uh, vegetable cart they have paytm uh, put there but when i showed my paytm it uh, couldn't scan then he said don't worry go to the next cart pay pay him in paytm and i'll take it from him i'll take the money from him so these there are a lot of um, innovative ways how um, payments are made so let's say you want to test that you're definitely not going to test it with um, a rich ux ui uh, based uh, form uh, or a mobile app or anything like that but you may um, still want to give an impression that the real app is working this is how the app is working so you may want you may do a rich prototyping but back end you may you may entirely have uh, excel sheet calculations or a huge human army behind it doing all the calculations which the customer will never know um, in that when you do that you know that your experiment is working and that's the time to put it back into the product roadmap to develop a back end and a front end and your um, user experience and customer experience features in that so um, let me take um, you know in, in in general i found that uh, assuming all all startups that at least i've come across are all uh, finally uh, tech solution startups uh, no matter what they do um, and there are there are a couple of um, offline things they do which is non tech but quite a lot is tech or converted into tech in those cases um, a set of prototyping tools uh, you know this iris is very good mobirise is very good uh, proto.io is not bad or a simple html css uh, front end is also good um, that's pretty lean to do it there are enough prototyping and back end you can you can just build a, a very um, simple database a flat table an excel uh, anything else and have some kind of offline processing to be done then uh, i've seen most of the startups in bangalore fit into uh, what i'm seeing right now now the second bullet uh, is about every product roadmap feature always aligns always with business strategy and budget 
why I'm saying this is um, when you know um, there are um, a lot, quite a you know product roadmaps are done by product managers in big enterprises, but in um, startups it's usually the CTO who's responsible for that. And most of us CTOs love uh, bringing in mm, high class technology. We all love it, and uh, we are, we are itching all the time to develop it. And I want to develop it and see it, you know. So that is a uh, pure play, uh, pure, pure blood uh, CTO space. But then, um, the you know you you should avoid or you know somehow hold yourself back against uh, developing something that is not exactly with business strategy, uh, and there is no budget for it. Uh, what I mean by budget is not just developing the product. You also need the budget later on for uh, supporting it, for um, for uh, expanding it, scaling it, everything. So the budget is never what you initially thought it is. Then, um, and also the business strategy. For example, um, in my own company, uh, I wanted to bring in um, really top-notch uh, machine learning features. But then we uh, over over um, you know a few months and you know talking to various uh, stakeholders, partners, resellers, everyone, we came to know that um, we will not get the millions of records that we will need in order to do any decent machine learning of them. So uh, or rather, they they have so many other um, forms of data that I can pull in, which is not technically you know machine learning but i can pull in to get the same insights then as a cto who does the product roadmap i have to change my uh, roadmap there i have to be uh, pragmatic um, humble and uh, do what is necessary for the company uh, although you know I'm, I'm going to go and say in my brochures you know we are doing data insights based on a lot of data analysis that is true but data analysis like using what so uh, we have to be pragmatic uh, and it's most of the time uh, it's um, pragmatism is what is needed uh, unless you're a very deep tech company which means that itself is your uh, product offering So I'll give you some examples. Uh, this example, don't pay too much attention to it. I just wanted to show you uh, that some companies have something called business roadmaps. Okay. So if you really see here, they are, you know, a glorified way of showing project uh, roadmap, project plans. But um, you get a um, one view of uh, what operations what to do, what uh, marketing wants to do, what product product development what to do, and sales want to do. I'll give you a few seconds to see what's there in it. So any part of the roadmap obviously has a timeline uh, and it, it has, so most of it can be just done in a um, Excel sheet or Word document. Um, there is no uh, project road. Uh, there are a lot of tools out there when I Googled it. Um, I haven't seen any product road mapping tool uh, that is a earth shattering tool uh, for me just uh, writing it on white paper converting it into a you know some a powerpoint or word or excel where i can draw these bars against timelines just fit it perfectly i'll go to the next one okay so this is my favorite uh, roadmap example this is taken uh, as you can see uh, from ernst and young and available on public domain but uh, e each one of us have a um, uh, favorite so my favorite is this so typically what this uh, says is obviously it's for messaging and collaboration kind of thing but essentially you have a small circle for less than a year a bigger circle for one to three years and the bigger circle for three plus years <clears throat> So the small circle usually is for six months to one year. Um, and assuming your startup is an early stage, it will involve whatever I spoke till now, the lean experiments, uh, what you can do offline and with real uh, human force behind in order to learn things. Um, then it, you will all, you will, all those features that you can, uh, you want to test out in the market. But in your roadmap, you will say yeah, it's a lean experiment, but you call out the feature as it is, you know. For example, if, if your feature is um, 
you know a digital menu that i want to create for my uh, food tech startup i'm you know you call it definitely a digital menu uh, you are not going to say lean experiment digital menu but the implementation will be lean first for some time uh, then you have a little bit of um, offline uh, processes if you ask me the question why should i have um, how, how do i get it done you know i may have thousands of uh, financial statements to process how will i do it there are companies there are startups out here who only do manual work on so many things like you know they make lots of phone calls they make surveys they make um, they go through financial statements they will add up something for you so all the dumb human work sorry to say that there are so many people to do that so you don't have to spend money in order to build that product yet but in your product roadmap you will say the real features uh, so the smaller circle is what i said is going to be lean uh, that your founders uh, want to check it out uh, but if you are already into um, series b or you know series c kind of level then also your smaller circle will always have those new things that you want to check out because uh, obviously you know anyone going from uh, a stage to stage in a startup is always checking out uh, newer ideas newer hypotheses now beyond uh, the smaller circle less than one year uh, around one year uh, technically you should have found the product market fit so uh, i i i'm i'm sure you all know what product market fit is but uh, just for um, completion correct uh, correct being correct uh, product is used by the market that means the market likes your product uh and you are able to define what the market is so that you can expand in that market how do you know a product is being used by the market uh, i mean those are uh, there are enough uh, material out there uh, for that but in general um you know you should in your product roadmap and i've talked about it later um, remember this as i told you uh, this one year time is for product market fit right so at that time you should already have hooked on your uh, customer behavior to some form of analytics tool so if your business is about um, you know i'm just giving a completely non tech example um, you know if it has no tech tech uh, part to it at all then i would guess you know it is like this uh, good old survey of you know earlier days when people used to come door to door and ask do you want to use nirma nirma soap powder or self excel why do you want to use nirma kind of things uh, but today whether you are in a swiggy or you are in um, any of these kind of companies you have enough tech hooks back to you whether a certain thing has been done let's say your courier let's say you are like done so you surely know whether something has been delivered or not so you have enough uh, tech hooks web hooks whatever hooks you have to figure out so i am assuming that an analytics tool uh, google analytics is good enough you, there's no need to buy expensive tools out in the space and analytics tools are very very expensive so uh, i have figured out um, ways to do analytics uh, which we'll talk about later but you should have enough hooks into your analytics tool to know that there is product market fit so around one year if your products are not showing product market fit it is time to uh, start checking out other things there's no point in just going uh, you know bang bang with more and more similar product features it is um, in in some ways the um, rule moral rule for uh, vcs and founders to ask hey you know why are we developing this product show me that customers are using it if not uh, change it you know that's a time for self introspection and changing it uh there is uh, always this thing that no 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 you know we'll do just one more tweak and there and you know it's going to start working which is fine but be conscious of that and don't keep developing something for which there is no pmf now um one to three uh, i'll i'll make it one to two years okay so one to two years you know your product let's say you achieved your pmf and you know that customers have started working now is the time to start thinking about uh, monetizing it so uh, i'm not saying that people didn't pay anything from the first place but surely you know you want to capture the market first you want to uh, win their hearts over you want to change their habit such that they will not uh, imagine you know uh, 
I think that's, I think Intuit still has that uh, quote, right? Uh, we cannot imagine customer going back to his old ways of working after using our product. So, because um, once you reach that stage, think about monetizing it. So, uh, you know, uh, so the product roadmap has to start thinking about what is it that I will do in my product roadmap, which is what is it that I'm going to do in addition to this feature being there, what adjacencies I'm going to do there in order to make money. So uh, it could be, you know, uh, partnering, it could be uh, doing developer SDKs for third parties to consume it. Uh, it could be um, uh, reselling it could be uh, working with uh, other big players and uh, or you know it could be aggregation it could be developing a marketplace where originally you had only products and now you have a marketplace various strategies but at the end of um, two years not only there is product market fit uh, the product roadmap clearly shows um, that um, the companies strategy on um, making money is working. Archana, I haven't heard a sound anywhere. So everyone is on mute, is it? Yeah, I put everyone on mute, uh, Vidya. Okay. So uh, we've been getting some questions, but primarily around uh, slides um, and being able to connect with you. So if there is a question related to the slides, I'll probably interrupt you yeah. and uh, uh, possibly. Yeah, sure. Yo, okay. This is not formal there. Please, you know, open it up because it's so very silent and I kind of find it. Uh, I'm, I'm just talking. <laughs> okay. So let, yeah. So, so let me unmute people. So. I'll finish this slide and then we'll open it up for questions until here. Makes sense. Makes sense. Thank okay. You. Okay. So now we finish like one to two years. So now let's say like one to three years, right? So uh, one to three years. Uh, by the two to three years you got product market fit you know how to monetize you're definitely you understood the game you already know the game of you know how do i know a product is uh, worthy of development you've got the uh, formula there uh, now is now is the time to uh, start you know your uh, um, ambitious fundraising uh, ambitious expansion ambitious scale so product roadmap is a uh, necessary tool for all these things uh, because uh, if, if you see someone's product roadmap you you should be now able to say hey uh, where are they it's it's very similar it's as important uh, or as revealing as a uh, balance sheet over over five years if you see that you know how the company was doing you know what are the npas what are uh, what has the company done uh, with respect to you know its equity and debts and how is the company uh, managed uh, all its businesses etc right the product roadmap is not um, it's it's a living document it's a very revealing document now the last big circle uh, nobody knows but it has to be there uh, beyond uh, three years you know i you have to as i said uh, it has to be really thinking big very very ambitious stuff um, and it it has to then now is the time for the product manager to breathe easy and he's going to bring in the really uh, impossible uh, once you know people will say are you foolish why are you doing this you think you can do this so you know that kind of thing comes in the final circle um, so this is my favorite template and example there are other templates also that comes later but i'll open it up for questions um, uh, at this point in time awesome vidya so i'm going to unmute the participants uh, so participants please uh, feel free to ask questions right now if that sounds okay Just give me a second while I'm unmuting people. Okay, so I've unmuted most of you. So you can ask questions if there are any. If you would like to uh, drop some questions in, uh, please feel free to do the same. I think we'll also check, type it in the chat box. Chat box. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Hi, Arjuna, Vikas, 
Awesome. Go ahead. Hi, Vidya. This is Vikas Chandra. I take care of. Uh, I, I founded uh, Bond Cuisine. Oh, nice. Hi, Vikas. Great to have you here on board. And thank you, uh, Arjuna, for connecting me with the Vidya. Sure, Vikas. Yeah. So one question comes to my mind because I'm not a techie. I'm actually my background is business only. I uh, checked you. Yeah. I worked with a couple of corporates and I have managed businesses for them. Uh, now my startup have been uh, founded in last year October. So we started the business around year and a half back. So Bond yeah. uh, Cuisine is actually a boutique startup where we are it's a curated marketplace sort of thing, which is hmm. which is working to be. Uh, I understand product from a customer point of view. I'm not a techie, so I don't I would not be talking much of technology, but de yeah. definitely I would be talking about experiences and where to plug what, like what yeah. what suits at what what stage of the what stage of the startup? Yeah. So uh, just to understand that point number two, which is mentioned here, the right of the slide, which is beyond uh, below productivity. So what those uh, standards or say those heads means to us? Here you have mentioned engineering and implementation process. So it is ENY. I understand that uh, that's that's the basic, and that's the most fundamental thing, and then the size and the impact. I didn't. So what, are you referring to an earlier slide? I'm. I'm no. I'm referring to the current slide, which was showing that just now. Yeah, the second oh. slide. I couldn't, I couldn't find anything. Uh, it's all blurred, so nothing is readable. So I'm oh, referring to the first slide. Okay. I just want to know, understand the headings you have put in and number two. Oh, no. number so two. this is an example of a uh, see product roadmap that is meant for some. Um, tech solution which was meant for messaging and collaboration. Okay, so this is not a generic one. It's no, specific no. So, to business. yeah, yeah. Uh, they, you can't make a generic one. Only uh, you know. So let's say yours for Bond uh You know, every uh, bullet will be different. You know, for uh, I don't know what you would want in the first uh, one year. But uh, as I said, you know, let's say you want to do a virtual cafeteria or digital menu, uh, your first, your small circle will always mean, um, you know, maybe you could, you might have even started with uh, something. Uh, yeah. So that when I when I see this slide, uh, it comes to my mind that what all should be there in the first few circles, first first circle, and then the second circle, that pops up automatically. So thanks for showing this slide. This this gives me very clear clear cut picture. What kind of roadmap my product should have in future? Okay, I'll also show you some more templates, and you'll get. But uh, the thing is, I couldn't show any um, real startups that I have because you know product roadmaps are uh, confidential, so I couldn't show. I just picked up from but Google. A generic, a generic would be better, I think. Uh, this looks very sophisticated, very uh, techy kind of because I yeah. understand these languages by that because I come from a telecom background. Most of the Words which is being used is related to telecom or IP, mm. so I understand those jargons. But sure, still, sure. I think very much techy. But uh, anyway, this is the how should we proceed in our product roadmap? Totally, totally. Uh, point taken, Vikas. Yeah. And can you elaborate a bit of second slide because it was, I, it was I, we couldn't fetch out any information from there. <laughs> No, the third one, sorry. The one which is having grades. Yeah. So this one, this uh, which you couldn't read, right? Yeah. So um, this is, as I told you, I, I said that uh, this is a one view of all the roadmaps. So typically there are so many roadmaps. There are capability roadmaps. There are business roadmaps. Yeah. Uh, there are um, talking about infrastructure operations, everything like marketing, PR, product development. Yeah. Sales. Yeah. So this one is a one view of everything. So uh, okay. here, since you can't read it, I'll read it for you. So the top blue ones are operations roadmap. So mm -hmm. you know it it talks yeah. about. Uh, uh, the second one is marketing and PR roadmap. Then it comes product roadmap. Then it is a sales roadmap. So for a CEO or for founders, it gives a one view of everything. Yeah. 
i'll uh, take it offline with you we'll do i'll uh, you know if i have time i'll um, you know maybe if you also have time we can talk about uh, bon cuisine's roadmap later yeah that will be great that will that will very much uh, required with yeah okay i mean yeah. i just do it uh, because i like it as a passion i'll some if i find uh, weekends I'll, if i find time we can do it uh, right right of the line will chat so let yeah. me continue. Um, yeah, okay. okay, so as I said, there are many, many other points of roadmaps. Maybe this will help uh, even the non techie guys because not, I mean, half techie guys, not non techie. Uh, this is typically roadmaps about um, uh, this, uh, you know, what you will use, you know, for example, which tools you will be using, which um, AWS or cloud system you'll be using. Uh, so these are technological, this is a technology life cycle roadmap. It's not a product roadmap. Um, I'll go to the next one. So um, this is also, sorry, all these are tech, techie ones, uh, but you know, this was for uh, Ford's digital worker strategy, uh, which is, you know, how does a, uh, how do you enable digital workers? You know, you know, for example, they may be using a um, voice service and which one will they use until when? Uh, email service, conferencing, soft phones, document, you know, will they manage with collaboration management? So um, the, the whole idea is once I see this, I will know uh, which products are going to be used. Uh, and, uh, you know, if we in, in, in um, concerted way with other roadmaps i'll know what is the budget what is who is going to be using when is it going to be retired uh, if at all um, or, and how much are we going to be paying for it uh, and in some ways uh, what is the roi for it wait till i come back to the next examples so these are product budget roadmaps so here you you have uh, projects by business area at the top. I'll give you some time to read it. Is this if it's not visible? I don't know how to make it bigger. Yeah, I don't think changing the no. I can't make it bigger. So here it says what is uh, the product feature that you're introducing, and uh, is it coming you know the second one is is it right now active is it in the pipeline is it speculative uh, for what is it being used um, you know is it for uh, online banking interface or consolidation or payments what is it um, what is the objective uh, the objective is very important so here it says you know we want to consolidate accesses accessing or the objective is i want to retire legacy applications um, or you know the objective is compliance management the objective can be different and then the most important one here is the total project cost so what's the cost in terms of usually we all uh, put it still in millions because the vc uh, valuation is always in millions um, percentage cap budget what's your capex budget what is your opex budget and that budget uh, in which Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, where is it going to be spent? So when the money is released, the product roadmap has the other one that you saw has to align with this, which is the product is being built only when the money is going to be available or released. If this is not there, that uh, cannot be um, followed. Mm. So this is how a product manager or the CTO um, looks at what feature needs to be developed and it, it also highly correlates with hiring right so if, if you're hiring people you need to have uh, an idea what not exactly but some some kind of you know is is the guy uh, which kind of product features will be developed and which is why we are hiring this guy which means the budget has to be there and the budget that means it has to come from which round you know of, of funding that you're planning to have um, in terms of uh, there's also this IT change strategy impact analysis. Uh, I would say this is a little uh, theoretical, no need to follow it for an early stage startup. Uh, this means, you know, uh, by doing this, how many other services are affected? How many other apps have to be changed, you know, in terms of upgrade? Or migrated uh, in an API economy, you you have to say even which which APIs have to be retired or you know uh, upgraded. 
um, then um, which infrastructure has to be removed or upgraded. But I would say that column number three, don't bother for me. Okay, so uh, as I said, most of the stuff that I've seen finally uh, are tech solutions. So I gave more examples of tech roadmaps, uh, whether it is Swiggy or whether it is um, um, uh, you know, apparel company uh, or even if it is Big Bazaar kind of thing, everything is finally a, uh, an app. Um, so that tech part of it I've developed here, but you know, the product itself uh, where you develop, for example, let's say you are, um, a food food company like MTR, are you MTR powders? Are you going to do a new powder or not? That is not included in this roadmap. That that also, but will follow the similar principles, but it's not included because I, I put only the tech elements here. So uh, a common, a good roadmap also has to be very comprehensive. That's the point I'm trying to make here. It's not it's not enough if it is just vertical and deep it has to be pretty horizontal it has to connect everything together so it's okay for it not to be deep but it cannot afford to be um, just vertical it has to take it into it so when we talk about tech roadmaps it means integrations and what i mean by integrations is for example let's say now i'm swiggy's uh, roadmap you know creator i have to think uh, about um, how do people log in that is the easiest thing that we are doing now but let's say I'm going to sell Swiggy to Infosys. Nobody is going to use Swiggy as it is. They'll come through the Infosys logins. Uh, or, you know, I may have Swiggy and Zomato together uh, someday, you know, uh, together. So how, how am I building the product upfront for future partnerships or integrations or those things? This cannot be done at a later stage because um, the product roadmap creator has to be like a visionary. He or she has to prepare the framework necessary in order for uh, various kinds of business strategies to work. So that's what I meant by integrating. of um, having analytics from day one they start analytics very late um, but an analytics is your real um, mirror for for you to know if customers are using it or not can't emphasize that more um, similarly as i said there are uh, you know migration to larger scale uh, whether if, whatever products you are doing it right so uh, you have to think about in your product roadmap um, whether that is going to be um, throwaway or uh, you're going to continue that as a feature. So let's say now I'm just again purposely picking up really wild examples. Let's say I'm cafe coffee day, right? And I suddenly want to start uh, jasmine and jasmine flavored coffee. I don't know if people will like it or not because uh, you know it's jasmine tea is no, no one knows jasmine coffee is no. Right? So sometimes uh, it is throwaway. It is a throwaway one. Or, uh, you know, if I'm making uh, the, the coffee powder, then, you know, it, it's like, you know, uh, the roasting technologies, the uh, uh, temperature technologies, the uh, storage technologies, everything, if I bring in, then it is a continue feature. So this migration to larger scale has to be built in into the, that's a common element in a roadmap. Uh, privacy and security, all of us know what it is, but um, I'll, I'll emphasize a few things here. So in in um, product roadmaps are not deeply technical so stuff such as personally identifiable information and i think zomato is a classic case where the information came out with a small uh, you know vulnerability and a hacker exploited it so uh, and then you know all that you that you build becomes a waste just just because of one wrong press and everything uh, goes goes for a toss so um, the 
privacy and privacy part has to be taken seriously from the beginning uh, and but it's not difficult uh, there are only a few um, things that i can you know just count on my fingers you know where your uh, the way your passwords are transmitted passwords are stored um, any other financial information uh, is stored or you know you have to understand the regulatory requirements and work with them but uh, a cto or product manager has has to be very conscious of this we cannot say hey you know i'll take care of it two years later that will come to bite the company uh, similarly as i said uh, analytics common elements that go into tech roadmap um, are you know uh, for techie guys you know it's basically your app or your solutions your website have to have what i have called here as web hooks which is you know whatever a customer does it has to be recorded somewhere so for example you know there are different ways to do it mm. there are simple ways in the back end in the database where you can capture most of the things uh, you don't need a high class analytical tools at all in fact you don't ever need a high class analytics tool and uh, uh, you just have to know what you want to measure i'll give you an example so typically you know if you uh, are a high user experience um, kind of um, company you want to know how long your customer was there in your app or in your website did the customer scroll up and down 10 times or you know not was the con customer confused you know that's a whole point there or the customer uh, did he click uh, immediately how many clicks until how many clicks uh, he or she progressed uh, how many times the customer came uh, unique customers yeah but you know within a day the same customer how many times he or she came into it um, then uh, did the customer just um, hover over it or um, actually just click and go so you know if you are let's say i'm a, i'm a mantra you know i'm an apparel company i want to know all these things because customer behavior is extraordinarily important for me i understand the customer's mind from this so analytics tools are important but now let's say i am a mm, uh, you know like uh, the example that we have here i'm just looking at it let's say i'm this sme payments company uh, procure to payments and if if i am like a uh, i'm i'm you know user experience is not as important as the real conversions and transactions then most of the information i want i can keep in the back end i will know for example i will know how many times a customer visited uh, and i can store it from my logs i can find out i can put it in the back end i can um, find out if obviously payments happen i can find out how many times the payments failed extremely important uh, i can find out uh, which payment gateways uh, response how long it was which one really spoiled the user experience uh, i can see whether any other technical glitches you know that actually that we see uh, in whatever in the front end of an app or front end of a website is actually a back end issue so uh, analytics and customer behavior can be captured on front end and or back end and all of them give different insights to you uh, and you don't need any fancy analytics tool to find out all these things so i've given some examples of what's captured here as i said clicks page views demography you know what's the age what's the location what what is the customer's profile mm, uh, impressions uh, similarly emails that you sent you can find out whether they were read or not used or not all those kind of things uh, and then you convert it into you know do you have loyalty you know conversion rate intent economic value etc so these are bordering on marketing but if you go to a marketing company uh, what happens is they just um, measure 100 things and they i'll tell you you know we measure this 100 things but a product roadmap creator should know what things have to be measured for his company or her company um, an analogy is like this right so when you give your blood test sample to uh, any of this blood testing companies they'll say um, thousand you know thousand rupees for um, 10 parameters 3000 rupees for some 70 parameters so normally you think okay i'll give 3000 rupees i'm going to get 70 parameters so and then you know that you know one is a derivative of the other and all that so it's very similar so mark, don't go to marketing companies and tell them hey can you uh, create uh, the right marketing for the right segment 
they won't know who your segment is they'll say yeah yeah sure we know who your segment is all that they'll do is go to google analytics they look or which of analytics and they look into your demography your behavior and they look at hey you know um so many the 80 percent of the people are from 25 to 35 years of age um 40 percent of the people are from bangalore okay let's go and you know um, seg make this a segment but your real segment may be very different you know half of them wouldn't have access because of uh, customer glitches or payment glitches or uh, they uh, would have had some other reason uh, not to go through your screens so it's important to have your own web hooks to find out who is doing what and that that determines what feature goes into your product uh, roadmap next or what feature uh, you knock off from your product roadmap. Okay, and I said budget goes hand in hand with roadmap. I've already explained this to you, but essentially uh, when I meant budget, uh, one is, you know, R&D expenses, which is essentially uh, the money that you spend for hiring. I think that's the biggest one. Uh, plus, uh, most of the tools that you use from the beginning, please use only open source. I don't think there is any reason not to uh, use them uh, you know including uh, from the from the operating system to the programming languages uh, to the hosting tools um, there are um, enough uh, free credits for startups for us from so many places from uh, talk about any hosting solution they'll give us uh, for at least a year free uh, maybe intuit is giving you free just check it out but um, essentially that's so you know r d expenses will not be high but uh, after uh, so, you know a certain stage then you'll have to be conscious of certain expenses for example let's say google maps or um, many of the standard uh, tools that we use uh, for location you have to use google maps but let's say thousand locations you know thousand times uh, thousand apis it crosses in a day then the price really goes up really steeply uh, there are so many apis like that for which the cost is really steep and it goes up after a particular uh, threshold so r d expenses are a mix and match of all these things Mm -hmm. Similarly, the product roadmap has to take a decision about build or buy because uh, let's say now I want to build a product and there is enough justification for that, right? But then building it takes um, $3,000, let's say, I'm just giving an example. Now, um, let's say I can buy something on a subscription basis, but which is a less uh, effective tool, but I can buy it like $50 per month. Uh, the product roadmap uh, should think about going for subscription for a reasonable period of time being in not that effective as it would be with a build tool. So these are judgmental calls uh, and there is no um, hard rule for which one how to buy when. Um, similarly um, you know hiring hiring right so uh, hiring is a budget uh, product roadmap sometimes gets in influenced by hiring because uh, you know in the market let's say you you're able to get um, only python developers okay uh, but then most your product really does your your development head doesn't want to use python he wants to use golang so then someone you know with respect to the budget and the product that you want to build which is essentially the product roadmap you decide hey no let's go with who is available for hiring let's build it or you know you say no we will only build it when we are able to hire the exact skills that we need uh, and uh, also legal and patent do think of it uh, at every stage in the product roadmap very important whenever there is a patentable idea and it's not like um, you know uh, that unique as we think uh, patenting in us is very expensive Patenting in India is uh, not expensive, but then there are pros and cons to both, uh, which is off the records, I'll tell you. But uh, patenting, uh, patent your idea, if you can carve out and patent it, then uh, you've set up for a great valuation of your company from the beginning. So uh, thinking about legal aspects, thinking about patenting is important and patentable idea should go into your product room. Uh, similarly, you know, plan for release items, which because, you know, uh, as I said, uh, for example, uh, if, if you're a retail store, are you going to uh, 
you know release it just with retail or with uh, experience showrooms uh, you know uh, you know let's say i'm a jaguar tap uh, faucet uh, am i going to be sold via amazon or mantra uh, oh, not mantra yeah. oh, flipkart or uh, is it going to be uh, just through an experience showroom or am i going to only put it up in airport uh, shops you know that's a decision to take similarly for tech you know are you going to put it in the app store but it's very um, difficult for sometimes for your app store to approve your apps so am i going to put it in an alternate distribution uh, distribution uh, environment uh, am i um, going to um, release it b2b through someone else so these things also go into the roadmap uh, so that's why product roadmap uh, is not really really just product roadmap there are you know a little bit more there and there so this is my last slide uh, summary uh, product roadmap reflects everything about the roadmap you know it shows it says what the idea is whether you have product market fit or not uh, what is your execution path um, have you made continuous adjustments have you made pivots because um, as i said um, adjustments and pivots straight away tell you whether the founders are thinking uh too too much of changes obviously you know nobody likes but obviously you have to test your idea really well before changing it or uh, you know uh, for the better um but you know product roadmap says all these things if i see a product roadmap for um uh, two years and i mean one and a half years is already passed then i will know what what happened in the company uh, and as i said you know it has to align with the capability and budgets uh, and remember this product roadmap is not for general distribution uh, it is confidential it's always confidential you can share it with investors under a confidentiality clause if not for investment deck make a watered down much more uh, high level product roadmap but uh, a very good uh, detailed product roadmap is confidential to the company uh, so this is my email feel free to contact me on this um sorry i was uh, i had only tech examples but i will definitely help uh, non tech product roadmaps if i get some time uh, but there one question if you're if i'm audible to you yeah you are yeah yeah so does this uh, uh, patent ship or any kind of ip rights helps the startup in growing and getting the funds easier or... yeah big time big time big time so uh, typically as we all know right you know services startups uh, services means it can be usually uh, you know something that you do for each client like swiggy goes and gives food to each um, person in his house so that is services startup but uh, uh, you know on product startups the valuation are very different services startup is usually um, you know 3x 2x 3x um, kind of valuations where just product startups use go up to 10x at least now if you have patents um it goes much more like i recently saw someone 100x um uh, there one more question here so we don't have any extraordinary or deep tech uh, out of the world solution with us but we are trying to uh, connect process with tech mm. which is going to make the entire experience amazing to the customer yeah yeah right so uh, what should what do you suggest us to do should we get the patent ship done for the process as well as the tech or a couple of features in the tech which is nobody is using and we can go and freeze those tech tech part tech yeah. uh, tech, tech, tech those couple of features and make it patented that will also work what do you suggest yes 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 so let's say your process has an innovation but you are achieving that process through tech okay the tech itself is not deep tech the tech is doing what is highly innovative on the product side um, that is patentable so okay. uh, your tech itself doesn't have to be deep tech but you are uh, achieving uh, your uh, innovation through that tech but the innovation is on the process side or a non tech product um, then then it's achievable Uh, so for example let's take this i'm i'm just again you know giving some wild example um id idli uh, they yeah. offered a vada making machine you saw that uh, yeah. now vada is not a patent <laughs> everyone yeah. has eaten that for centuries uh, the technology that he 
uses also you know the 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 piston the pushing it the um, the uh, those mechanical stuff are also not patentable they've all been there but the yeah. what i'm making through that machine that is patentable right so with the features of a product which might not be a great uh, it seems when you talk about but the moment you plug it with the solution in the process the yeah. entire the entire product proposition becomes unique yes so you, then i'm correct that if i can go and patent it it adds lots of value to my startup right time, the world, time. yeah 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 oh you have you should have like if your company is uh, again just thumb, thumb rule okay two years old you should have like two to five patents then you'll get and, great uh, value how 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 should we find that which is the right time to get it done because before going to the market during the beta phase launch or after launching it let the people use the product and then get it vetted and then you do it which, which is the right time to get it done you should do it um, after people have started using but like about 100 200 people have started using because okay. that you have to patent it otherwise you know it's uh, you're not other uh, someone can copy and you can't do anything about it correct yeah yeah good So how do, how shall we reach you out? Do you, is it possible if uh, it's still a mail? Take can, my, you don't know my number. I'll I'll just tell you, you right now. Yeah, then I'll just type it here. No, I have your email from Archana, so I'll send it to you. Yeah, that will be great. Or I'm having your email, so I'll send send a, a brief of my business along with a keynote, and then we can keep yes. on discussing all this. Oh yeah, that's really great. Okay. Yeah, Archana, I think uh, no one else has asked questions. So, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, hi, Vidya. I'm Smita here. Hi, Smita. Which company? Uh, uh, we are called Very Pure Labs. We are working on food testing, food building products oh, nice. to uh, test nice. foods. Okay. Yeah. Um, I need your help in making a product roadmap. Would you be able to help me out? Definitely, I like making it. Uh, I'll, we'll, we'll, it's only a, it's only a function of time. So definitely will help because that's my passion. Great, and your timing is perfect because I'm in the process of uh, working on something on those lines, uh, making a product roadmap, etc. So, so yeah. we'll, we'll shop base. Yeah. I, I have a like What's that? Would you be able to share the slides that you just? I'll send it to you. Um, I think uh, Intuit has recorded. I can see the recorded button. But I'll uh, these are. I'll I'll send it to you. It's not like uh, it, there's nothing uh, uh, private here. I picked it all from Google uh, search. So I'll send it. To you. Great. Thanks. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Arjuna. Thanks a lot. Thanks for there. I have to rush now. I think yeah. this is the end of the session. Yeah. Anyone, uh, Archana, we are done, right? Yeah, we're done. Anyone else has any questions? Otherwise, we could wrap up. Thank you. So I'm taking off now. Yeah, bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, if you have any questions you have with your email ID, please feel free to reach out to her and you all have my mail ID anyways. Uh, again, thanks so much for sharing and look forward to seeing you all in the next series of the Intuit Circles webinars. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your weekend. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, Archana. Thank you. Bye-bye.